go. Hi, I'm Jane Voorhees, and I am part of the Voorhees Family Art Show, which is this weekend. And I'm going to do a short little demo of a technique I've been using this year, which is uh, sort of a stamping technique of random color as an underpainting for watercolor. And so this is my studio. It's in the back of my house. It's a little sunroom. A uh, little room, but um, I make it work. And I have things, if I stay really organized, it works. And um, it gets messy in between. Yep. Uh, right now it's pretty clean <laughs> for this. So what I have are some examples of the finished pieces that um, show this technique, which is a real random, loose uh, paint applied to the first layer, and then I'm painting on top of that. So the same thing, it's these kind of marks that are going on. And then this one, I have a whole, pr oh dear, I have the piece of paper downstairs. I didn't finish printing it yet. It's downstairs, the steps for that one. Oh well, we won't do that. Okay. So, I'm going to show you a little bit about my setup here. I have my um, paints in the, this palette, and when they, um, I, I keep a lid on it when I'm not using it, and that, that helps uh, keep the moisture in them, but they do dry out, so the first thing I have to do before I can use them is to uh, spray them really nicely. And I, you know, even though I'm only going to use three pe three colors here, I'm I'm spraying them all, and then they just sit there like that, um, and kind of moisten up. Now I always have two water containers. One stays pretty clean because that's the water I'm going to draw from to to um, mix with the pigment. The other one is my rinsing bucket. This technique, I'm not gonna use any brushes, but I have an assortment of brushes. But I always have paper towel next to my palette. And then I've got my watercolor paper, which is um, 140 pound watercolor paper. This has uh, got a slight texture to it, and it's on a block. It is glued together, so the, the paper won't buckle severely um, when I'm wet it when I add the water. Now if I didn't use a block I'd be taping the paper down to a painting board um, and just working with that that way. So to, to do this technique which is this is a really uh, a fun technique because what it does is um, it you know a lot of times when well I do need a brush a lot of times when um, people are painting the first putting anything down on the paper is the hardest part starting is hard so um, if you can do something that uh, gets you past that fear of the white paper you do well so what I'm doing right now is I'm creating puddles of pigment and so I'm, I'm drawing the pigment out here and then I'm lifting and adding water to it. Now I'm gonna, I, I wanna mix here for this technique, I wanna mix of the primaries, blue, red, and yellow. And I'm gonna use any blue, red, and yellow for this technique. I'm using, but for this, I'm using ultramarine, I'm gonna use alizarin crimson, and I'm gonna use quin gold. So I'm drawing pigment out, putting it in the center, and, and adding water to it to make a puddle. A juicy and then I'm rinsing my brush and then I go to my Quin Gold which I I sometimes I, I do label the sides but it's hard to um, read them after a while but I I just end up knowing where these paints are because I they're my favorites I love Quin Gold it's luscious so these are the primaries and um, and then I've rinsed my brush and now this is a um, you never want to leave your brush in your bucket because you're going to ruin your brush. So you always remove it and uh, let it lay flat to dry. So for this technique, I'm going to put a plastic bag on my hand. And um, you can use saran wrap for this technique also, but a plastic bag is good because I can uh, 
add color. I'm, what I'm going to do is pick up color with the plastic bag, and if I want a clean color, I can go over and use the back side of my hand. But before I even start that, I want to spray my my paper some because what happens is when you add the um, the water on the paper is going to allow the the paint to move, and we want this um, loose sort of random movement. So see what that looks like? That's a mess. This is where the fun starts. And see, now if I put my this plastic bag into the yellow, it's going to contaminate the yellow. So I'm using the back side of my hand and I'm picking up the yellow. And then I, I want more blue, so I, I just go back. And now I can just st and see what's happening is the colors are mixing on the on the um, paper. And that's about all I'm going to do on that one. And you make a big mess and, and it gets all over. If, if um, wherever the paper is dry, you're going to have hard edges. And if you want uh, more soft edges, see I'm going to lift up a couple places just to stop it from moving. But if I wanted it to move out more, I could hit it again with spray. And actually I will hit it because you can see some spots that happen that's kind of cool with the, the spray. Or you could even spray alcohol on it also to add more texture. But that is all that I do with that um, piece. So then, and the, these are recyclables. You just take them and you clean them off and, and you use them again. But what I do, so here, here are some I, I did um, the other day, and I've got um, an assortment. You know, this one had a lot of, um, I sprayed water on top, so it's got softer edges as opposed to like this one, you can see the hard edges. And so what I'm going to do now is, is use it underneath. Uh, I'm going to build on top of that. So I've taped a piece down. I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I decide, what am I going to put on it? You know, one of the, you have two ways to go here. You can either um, look in it and see if it suggests something and play with that idea and uh, build from that point. Or you can impose something on it. I call it imposing on it. And so then if, I'm, if I want to do that or if I just want to challenge myself, I'll come over here. And these are all my reference photos. Well, not even all of them, but I, um, I take lots and lots of photographs. So um, I've got, one of the things I did during uh, the shutdown was I sorted my photographs. So I've got people, animals, travel. These are all plants. This whole box is landscapes. Just lots and lots. And one of the things I do, sometimes I'll just print a little tiny picture and you don't even have to have a good photograph to work from because all it's doing is um, giving you a suggestion to go from. But let's say like on this particular one, I might uh, decide that, could I work with this uh, in this, with these colors? And I think I could, I mean, it seems uh, difficult but um, it, it, it would be kind of fun and what you're, what you're going to do is then you're going to do your drawing right on top of this and uh, then you're going to start painting around it and getting those dark colors in there that's going to define this shape and um, I'm just doing a real quick sketch here But then you're using the next layer of paint to, to start pulling it together. And I wish I had my samples that I just printed. But um, can you see? <laughs> okay. 
Oh, I forgot to introduce my lovely assistant. Is Chad Alice Hagen doing the filming for me? Thank you, Chad. And 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 so one, once I I you know I would this is the part that takes time. The the first step here was very fun, quick, and easy. But then you got to slow down and and do this part where you really concentrate and you take it to the next step. And that's probably all I'm going to show you. However. I neglected to tell you a little bit about the watercolor block I wanted to tell you. And I'll tell you that real quick. If, you, if you've ever worked with a watercolor block, uh, you may not know how to remove it from the block. And it's all glued together except for one little spot. And you get a tool or a flat knife and you just go around like that. And usually I wait till it's dry because what happens is it's it uh, will hold it tight and um, and I know that I didn't cover everything let me just look at my notes and see um, <laughs> and oh you can use uh, tissue for lifting if I want to lift out places and make it lighter there are just you know the thing about watercolor is people always think that it is unforgivable and that is the one thing I like to try and stress you can do a lot with watercolor it has a lot of room for making changes and building on top of and having fun with it and that's what I like to try and do so that's my short little demo on underpainting and what I do with it so if you have any questions you can go to VorheesFamilyArt.com and you can Contact me through there, and you can see what we have to offer there for the show this weekend as well. It's today and tomorrow for his family art show. Thank you.